Hello and welcome to this presentation Uyuni the movie. This is a bit of a different presentation on what Uyuni is. Typically I do the presentation by enumerating all the features that Uyuni has, what it can do, what it cannot do, what it runs, the clients, and it's a very technical presentation that is mainly useful for people who already know a lot of the technical stuff involved in being a systems administrator. Today I'm going to do a different presentation. I'm going to try to explain how Uyuni is used in your day-to-day -day as a systems administrator. You will see that uh, in, the, in the slides I mentioned also what are the features that support your day-to-day. -day. Let's go for it. Let me introduce myself. My name is Pau Garcia. I'm the product owner and technical project manager of SUSE Manager. I work for SUSE. And since two years ago, I'm essentially the guy who decides what the development team and QA team and documentation team will do over the next few weeks in close collaboration with our product manager, of course. This, in turn, gives me, uh, let's say, uh, uh, the, uh, the figure of a benevolent dictator of Uyuni. Let's start with, with today's landscape, what we see in enterprise IT. Linux is present in almost 100% of the enterprises. Um, in some places it's 50%, in some places it's 95% like, like the clouds. Uh, another thing that we have seen is many, most of the enterprise users are not only addressing one cloud, but multiple clouds. And many many users have uh, experienced also problems, security breaches, most of the times because they haven't patched or configured properly their systems. And the complexity of the IT is not diminishing, but on the contrary, every day it's increasing. Let's see what are the, the main challenges of IT complexity. I have split these in two parts. One is what we call the day zero and what we call day two. Day zero is before you start using operating your systems and day two is once they are, those systems are in operation. The challenges of day zero are provisioning, which commonly is done manually, which is slow and also inconsistent. There's sometimes the configuration is not applied equally because you are following instructions in some notebook or, or just by memory. This in turn leads to misconfiguration, to bad performance, to some systems not being compliant just because someone forgot to do something for that specific case. And it also requires a lot of, of labor, of effort. Also the deployments, yeah, you will deploy something today and tomorrow it's probably the same but what if it is slightly different so it's not easy to repeat the same thing that you're doing that you were doing in the past and then once your systems are, are actually put in production and you start operating them you of course need to uh, patch and update your systems and many sysadmins are still doing that manually this leads in turn to an irregular patch cadence. Instead of doing this every week, every month, every quarter, which are the most typical uh, patch cycles, they do it when they have the time or once they remember because they are busy or vacation or who knows. Uh, th what this causes is different patch levels across systems, even when those systems are part of, of the same application. Maybe some of the web servers in your, in your website are running one version of Apache, other systems will be running another slightly different version of Apache so in another patch level. And you are doing that all the time, which is very repetitive. Um, another important factor, of course, is I, I talked about security breaches in the previous slide. Well, security and compliance is very important. Vulnerabilities, uh, systems which are outdated and therefore are at risk. Uh, or maybe you are not even meeting your internal compliance requirements or if you are in a regulated industry, like banking, for instance, or military, 
doing that manually is, is a lot of pain and risk. And of course, you want to, to monitor the health of your systems, because what if one of your servers goes down and then the whole application and the whole system is paralyzed? Your company cannot continue operating normally. That downtime costs a lot of money. So what we have found is configuration and patch management is typically an afterthought. Everybody thinks of developing the application. Everybody thinks of, hey, let's put the system in production, but then the normal operation, hmm, not so popular. They remember when something has gone wrong. And this is exactly where Uyuni can help. Uyuni is the best in class open source infrastructure management solution. It's designed to help you in your enterprise DevOps and IT operations. It will help you reduce costs, reduce complexity, and regain control of your IT assets. And also it will help you to ensure compliance with your internal security policies and even external regulations. One good thing about the Uni is it's one solution to manage all your enterprise Linux infrastructure. It doesn't matter if it's on private cloud, on public cloud, hybrid cloud, in different clouds. It doesn't matter if you need uh, provisioning, patch management, building operating system images or containers, uh, virtualization. The Uni can help you with, with everything. Configuration management, everything's in, in the Uni. It covers, I will say, I typically say it's 80% of your day-to-day. -day. The architecture of Uni is the very typical client-server architecture. So there's the Uni server here, which um, it can be connected if you're a SUSE customer to the SUSE customer center, or it also connects to third-party public repositories, for instance, in the case of Debian or Ubuntu or CentOS or Alma Linux, for instance. So you have this, the Uni server, and then you have optionally the proxy elements. These are here in case you need to have a very large deployment. When you are when you go over 5,000 managed systems, we advise you to use proxies to offload some of the network and and first contact uh, workload from the the Uni server. You can of course attach systems directly to the Uni server if you have only a few hundred or just a few thousand systems. That was a summary. Let's now talk about Uni in your day to day. And for that, say hello to, to Joe. He's a fictional character and he's going to help us uh, go through a story. Our friend Joe is responsible for a Zless 15 SP2 system which runs some application, I mean, line of business application, which is not even important for the sake of the history of this story. In fact, uh, Joe is not just responsible for one system. He is responsible for a number of servers, which he has organized in one organization per internal department, so, because Uyuni is multi-tenant. So you can have different uh, Uyuni organizations, one per department, and that way you split your systems very well or in system groups even, in, in, the, in the same organization. Not all servers run on the same physical location. So some systems that Joe manages are on-premise, some are on public cloud, some are on private cloud, some systems are on bare metal, others are on-premise virtual machines running on a unit-managed KVM server, some are virtual machines running on cloud or VMware or... But Joe does not really care where his servers are since Uyuni is completely platform agnostic. So with a single Uyuni server, he can discover and manage clients everywhere. Even clients coming from the outside world, from AWS, from Azure, for Google Cloud, VMware, Nutanix, Zen, everything supported by Uyuni. And the good thing is Uyuni works exactly the same everywhere. Now, let's talk a bit about a very common workload, SAP. If you are in the enterprise world, you probably know this ERP. It's very, very well known. And the, the operating system that SAP typically recommends is, is less for SAP from, by, from, from SUSE. So everybody knows it's the best operating system for SAP workloads. And everybody knows also that less is the best Linux and OpenSUSE is the best open source 
Linux, right? But sometimes an application is not certified for OpenSUSE or for SLES, or you inherited uh, an application that someone, your predecessor, put in production, or yeah, for some other reason, you need to use some other Linux. Not a problem. With Uyuni, you can manage every enterprise Linux out there. It doesn't matter if it's SUSE, if it's Red Hat, CentOS, Oracle Linux, Ubuntu, Astra Linux, Alma Linux, Amazon, <laughs> Alibaba. Um, every, every enterprise Linux is supported. And even this embedded stuff like SLE Micro, everything supported by Uyuni. Single management tool, many different operating systems. The good thing of this is to Joe, to a friend Joe, all the servers, no matter the operating system, look exactly the same. They are managed servers under control, peace of mind. And indeed, a friend Joe can manage a ton of clients. With a single server, 10,000 clients is perfectly doable. And that's complexity. Just imagine if you had to do that manually. Joe needs, of course, asset management to keep an overview of what he has, like visualizing the asset landscape, assigning subscriptions in the case of paid for Linux operating systems. You, you want to, to subscription match your clients to your subscription pools. Compliance is a very important part of any enterprise company, and Uyuni helps you and helps Joe to easily prepare and prove compliance for license audits and requirements. Let's go to a very real case. Like, say, let's say Joe is using a new Uni server with three Uni proxy servers to offload the network and disks from the server, right? And then we have all of these client operating systems managed here. There's the Slash, there's less expanded support, CentOS, OpenSUSE, Oracle Linux, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Alibaba, Amazon, Slash for SAP, Alma, and I'm even missing here Ubuntu and Debian and yeah, a few more. We have reports of 35,000 clients with a single Uni server and a few proxies, of course. But uh, typically, we, we would advise Joe to use the Uyuni Hub, which is the multi server architecture where you have a Uni Hub server with uh, Uyuni peripheral servers and then proxies or clients that get attached to those proxies. With this kind of architecture, multi server architecture, you can manage hundreds of thousands of clients, all centralized and all with the same tool with Uyuni. Joe is using Uyuni to do his day-to-day, -day, like deploying software, patching servers, installing new software. He can schedule actions, run remote commands, combine commands in action chains to make sure that they are executed at once. Uh, he can describe the, the system in a single salt state so that he, uh, he can um, preserve this, the state and force some state to, to be preserved by salt. And, well, of course, you could still use the, the old school actions and action chains and running commands, really, but we advise you to use salt, really. It's, with the salt states, everything is easier. He really likes that thanks to this content lifecycle management, uh, he can create projects and filters, and he's in full control of whatsoever each client has. He can define these three typical environments, development, testing, and production, and then he filters out what the software and filters in, what he can combine different channels and sources. And once he has tested in his development uh, clients, he promotes the software channel to test into QA. Then after careful testing, he can, for instance, quarterly promote the software to production on all the systems at once, just subscribing channels that are automatically created by the content lifecycle management feature. Another typical patch cycle is the monthly patch cycle. You can define your content lifecycle management project for that. And then you can leverage the recurring states feature to deliver updates every month to your clients. Another possibility, you can say, okay, how to install the updates when they are ready. 
when they're, they are available in the channels and, and making the software available in the channel is something that you decide, no one decides for you. So you kind of state the contents. Joe Spears at the SAP department also use Uyuni. They love the ability of the content like cycle engine to filter patches that require a reboot. Saving reboots is a great, great thing. Reboots cost a ton of money. Just saving one reboot a year in a critical application such as SAP pays for SUSE Manager, which is the supported version of Uni, for the whole year. Our friend Joe has done his math and he knows that sometimes you have to pay to have kind of uh, insurance, to have someone to help you. In fact, thanks to live patching and content life cycle management filters, you can achieve 99.999 uptime by rebooting only once a year. And those are real uh, cases, not just something I'm making up now. Of course, client systems do not just appear out of thin air. But with Uyuni, there's no magic required to deploy new clients to virtual machines using Uyuni virtualization features, where you can use KVM or Zen. You can even deploy an, an HA virtualization cluster with live migration and everything, or to bare metal. In the case of Uni, there's no real difference. You can power on with IPMI or with Redfish and then auto install over the network those client systems on bare metal or in virtual machines. You don't care, it's the same. But just one clarification. When I say deploy, it doesn't mean that our friend Joe sits in front of the web UI and point and click to, to deploy several hundreds of client systems. <laughs> that, that wouldn't make any sense, right? Joe is a systems programmer. So he has his own scripts that leverage the Uni API. So everything in Uni is uh, manageable using the API or the web UI or the command line tools. You have the three possibilities. What we typically find is users start with the web UI and once they have learned the way through Uni, they start using the command line tools and in the end, script around the API and integrate more than just uh, the, the Uni uh, functionality. They integrate with, even with their own ITSM or uh, ticket creation or service manager, other tools. Sometimes our friend Joe even uses Sol directly. He's still learning his, this technology, but he thinks the automation capabilities are awesome. That's salt, right? It's very popular, but you have probably heard about another automation framework called Ansible. Well, Uni now provides Ansible too, so that moving uh, to, to from a red world, let's say, to a green world is, is now a lot easier. You don't need to rewrite all your automation to start using Uni. You can still keep your Ansible automation integrate your Ansible control nodes, and then yeah, manage everything with Uni. Of course, a thing that after a while of using Uni, you will also start using Salt, and then you will leave your Ansible stuff behind. You will keep it because rewriting takes a lot of effort and time and money in the end, but the new stuff you probably want Salt. Because the great thing about Salt is, is it's declarative and you say, okay, keep this state. And so we'll take care of everything. Contrary to Ansible, where you have to, start to, to execute the same playbook and to take care of maintaining the state yourself. Maintenance Windows is another great feature that we introduced uh, over a year ago in Uni, which the, 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 the too long didn't read of Maintenance Windows is changes are only allowed during a limited period of time which you have typically agreed or has been agreed for you by the change approval board in your company. So you define calendars, you define a slots, a few slots, time slots, where you are allowed to, to make changes and then you deploy uh, on, on all the servers that you have assigned to that maintenance window. That avoids human mistakes, which cost a lot of money. Even the large hyperscalers have suffered from time to time or human mistakes where they have deployed to production <laughs> in, in uh, during yeah, operational hours. 
you can, with Uni, you can avoid these kind of mistakes. You just need to define your maintenance windows with any tool, even your ITSM tool, and that's it. A very nice feature of Uyuni is Yomi. If you have ever tried to auto-install <laughs> systems with Kickstart of AutoJust, you know that this is very complex. Those XML files that you have to write are very, very complex and very tricky to write. Yomi is salt-based and we provide Yomi formulas so that you have a UI where you can, with just point and click, you can uh, define what's the software that you want to auto to, to install on some system, uh, how to partition the disk, how to network boot, everything. And then you save that and you say, okay, now apply this to these 300 systems. And you didn't have to write a single XML line. Oops. Sorry. Another great feature of, of Uni is building operating system images. Of course, you, you want to, to deploy something, but what do you deploy? Well, if you are going to, to, rep, to repetitively um, deploy the same thing over and over and over, maybe what you want to do is create a virtual machine definition with Kiwi. You put it in a, in a Git repository and then you build an operating system image and that then you use that as a template. That's very common also. <clears throat> and after deploying the image that you have created as a template, you just use configuration management with either Salt or Ansible to deploy the, the right configuration files or yeah, the right configuration settings to the, to the clone templates. And then you're done. That's it. So you deploy, you created a, a template, you deploy the template, and then you configure the template with the specifics of that, of those 10 or 5 or 100 servers, and that's it. And um, I, I have talked earlier about content cycle management. The main uh, attractive of a content cycle management is you typically do not want to assign what we call the vendor channels, the, the vendor repositories coming from the upstream uh, CentOS or Red Hat or SUSE directly to the systems. You typically want to filter some software to make sure that this is not installed, that this is on version X that you know that works currently with your application or to add, uh, for instance, monitoring software coming from an external vendor. And then you, you need to deploy that. So you create your own software channels, right? Now, you can use the same approach to build containers from so from that uh, software, those software channels that are vetted already, that are exactly what you want to do, what your IT department has decided that is the right software combination. You can now say build be a container and using Docker, that's what will happen. And then those containers can be deployed the same way that we deploy uh, operating system images or, or build a machine templates that you can build with Uyuni. So there's many possibilities of what Uyuni can do for you, or you can just say, okay, use this uh, Kickstart or AutoJust or Yomi uh, file or configuration to install actually the operating system. Joe can even build the software channels himself and then let other Uyuni users build whatever containers or operating system images or anything else they want. So he is the, let's say, the top level administrator of the Uyuni server or of the organization. And then there are other roles and users that will take care of, let's say, uh, less uh, dangerous functionality. Because our friend Joe always keeps an eye on security issues. Uh, CV 2021-12356 has been reported and you, you immediately want to know, are my systems affected? All my container images? All my, build, uh, my, my, my operating system images? Well, Uyuni will tell you that because Uyuni is continuously synchronizing the software, the, the CV information, and will tell you, hey, you have a, a security, uh, potential security breach of security risk here in this system or in this image or in this container so that you can quickly fix this by deploying a new version of, of and they will even recommend you what's uh, the version that will fix the problem. Another functionality in Uni is monitoring. We have, uh, we are shipping the, the what's, 
has come the, the cloud native industry standard today, Prometheus and Grafana. Um, we, we can auto configure with formulas, with forms. So with a UI or of course from the command line, if you want that uh, Prometheus exporters, Prometheus servers, Grafana server, we will, uh, when, when you register a client uh, to Uni, to, to put it under uh, Uni management, it will automatically discover that in Prometheus and in Grafana and it, it will save you time. That's a service discovery uh, that, that we implemented. Then in case that you, that you have, for instance, many different locations, like many different branches, you could use something called Prometheus Federation. And then for each of your remote sites, you can federate all of those metrics coming from the different Grafanas into a single Grafana uh, in, in, from different Prometheus servers into a single Prometheus server and then put that and have a single pane of glass to all your systems, no matter if they are on this cloud, that cloud, this location, that location. And you could, you, the, the case for this for Prometheus Federation is not just about uh, physical location or remote location. It's also, for instance, for different products. Imagine that you are in a data center where you have a, an application that offers monitoring with Prometheus, such as, let's say, Ranger, like Suze, and then you have also your clients, your, your operating systems, and you want to monitor the, the, the clients. And then you can federate the Prometheus coming from Grafana, from um, a Rancher, from the Prometheus coming from Uni, and put that in a single Grafana, single pane of glass. And that's the powerfulness of Prometheus Federation. There's many, many different cases for this advanced ninja skills that you can also use, salt beacons and reactors. So beacons, what they do is they inspect a the system, they are, co they are continuously running on some system. And then when they notice an event, they will contact the, the uni server and then you can react. You can define for this beacon, for this event, react like this, for instance. Could be if someone ta tries to um, change the password of some user or to change the configuration of of uh, my web server or my database server or whatever, not only disallow that, but also react by sending me an email. Or if this uh, system is down for more than one minute, react by sending a notification with PagerDuty or something like that. All of this is, is provided by Salt and with Grafana and with Prometheus. I have been talking about Joe, but what, what's Joe's job? Well, let's say he, he is doing, he's in the same sector that I was before I joined SUSE. I used to work in banking. And if you are in Europe, it happens that there are very strict rules coming from the European Central Bank on what your downtime can be and when exactly. If you are not following that, you will be fined with very, very hefty uh, uh, sanctions from the European Central Bank. Joe knows perfectly, and that's why he defines and assigns those maintenance windows to all his client systems. Remember that I mentioned that maintenance windows, it's about avoiding human mistakes, but also about saving money and not, uh, and not violating regulations. ITIL, have you ever heard of this? It's the most common um, used IT framework or methodology is not really a methodology but everybody calls it methodology in it operation right is the it information library and for me the, the most important process is the process called change management so uh typically you, you will have everything connected to your active directory or your company directory then uh, users will open a change request in your itsm tool for instance service now or vmc or whatever then uh, the, some people will review that, approve to deploy on a testing environment, probably using Jenkins or some other CI CD integration. And then once it's deployed, you, uh, you, uh, you have tested this, you want to deploy that uh, a few days later, a few weeks later in production. So again, you promote this in ServiceNow to let's now deploy in production and ServiceNow can connect to to Uni, uh, here it says Suze Maj, but it's really Uni. It, it, there's no difference between Suze Maj and Uni. And, and then you can do the whole cycle 
in 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 your ITSM tool, and it's all connected and it can be reviewed, and there's no need for minimal intervention. So the change approval board approves in ITSM tool in ServiceNow, and when it's reviewed and approved, it is automatically added to Uni and executed. So no need to even so Uni can, can run behind the scenes in your company, and you never know that. And there's many cases for this, like um, you could even uh, auto-generate. So remember I said that Uni is continuously synchronizing software patches from the upstream vendors, from Red Hat, from Ubuntu, from um, SUSE. Then when there's a CV that affects one of your systems, you could tell Uni automatically create a service now request to deploy this in a development environment, then in, in a testing environment, then in a production environment, and send me an email notifying that you have created that. So you don't need to do the work yourself. Uni will do it for you. You just need some glue scripts to connect your ITSM tool, ServiceNow, Ivanti, uh, Jira, ITSM, VMC, whatever. So the possibilities of automation with Uni and integration with other tools are thousands. So in summary, we could say that uh, Uyuni works for everyone. It doesn't matter if you have 50 systems or 25,000 systems or even 250,000 systems, because in that case, you will go to a hub server, well, a multi-server architecture. It's multi-tenant, so uh, it covers uh, the cases where you want to have everything in one single organization or where you want to organize. In, in multiple organizations, in multiple system groups. Uyuni is the best tool to manage your SLS for SAP workloads. We offer content life cycle management, live patching facilities. We have even a quick start guide for this very common use case, which is SAP. We have formulas with forms to the deploy HANA, NetWeaver, uh, replication with DRBD, uh, high availability. And we have Grafana dashboards specific for SAP. There's even an, a retail version of Uyuni and also of, of SUSE Manager, of course. And I will explain why I'm talk, I keep talking about Uyuni and SUSE Manager that you can use for uh, retail, for banking, for places where you have a lot of endpoints that are, uh, let's say, not really used by humans, um, like a desktop or like a server, but running some kind of embedded application. For instance, we have seen uh, many customers using well, the retail version for ATMs. And yeah, you say, okay, so how is ATMs and banking retail? In the end, it's the same. It's endpoints and you need an operating system that has a long cycle, a long life cycle, not just two or three years. For that case, SUSE offers something called the SUSE Linux Enterprise Point of Service with seven years, seven and a half years, actually and offers some specific functionality like DHCP, DNS, and some templates to build your images, OpenSUSE or less images that will make your life easier. In the end, Uyuni provides a proactive approach to your IT infrastructure management. It helps you regain complexity, control and complexity in heterogeneous Linux IT environments, which are the day-to-day. -day. It's, it's very... Uh, uh, rare these days to find that there's a single Linux that rules everything. There's Ubuntu and there's CentOS and there's Oracle Linux and there's SLES and, and that's uh, the day-to-day the -day of, of most of you attending this session today. This in turn saves costs and improves the productivity of your IT people, reduces errors and reduces complexity uh, through the, the simplified management via the web UI, the, the command line tools or the API. And of course, there's the enhanced security and compliance that the uni gives you. Summary of everything is anywhere Linux runs, uni manages. It doesn't matter if it's edge, data center, or cloud. Uyuni is the only Linux management tool that combines software, content lifecycle management, class link configuration management with Salt and Ansible, and automation for all the major Linux distributions. Let me explain now why I was talking about Uyuni and SUSE Manager. Uyuni is the upstream project for SUSE Manager. If you need support for Uyuni, then uh, the product you want is SUSE Manager. So contact your salespeople in, in, at SUSE. 
other than that, the, the, the only differences between Uyuni and Suzy Manager is Uyuni's committee supported. We have a meeting every month, the last Friday of the month at 4 p.m. European time. Uyuni runs on OpenSUSE Leap, while Suzy Manager runs on Suzy Linux Enterprise. There's monthly releases of both Uyuni and Suzy Manager. Uh, the difference is with Suzy Manager, the patches are provided for all the versions, while for Uyuni, the message we'll get is just move to the newer version. There's also some minor differences about the UI and the translations, where uh, the translations in SUSE Major are reviewed, are vetted by SUSE, and in, in, in Uni, we just enable everything by default, and yeah, some of them might not be that complete. So I will uh, tell you just join us at uniproject.org. Uh, follow us in Twitter. We have a YouTube uh, channel which is linked from Uni Project. Uh, we have chat with Gitter. And yeah, if you have feature requests, you've identified bugs, please come to our GitHub project and report them. We are always there to help you. Thank you very much.